How many of you have ever said this? Man, I've been working at my job for three years, for five years, for 10 years. I've been at my business, in my career for years. I've got nothing to show for, but I got a lot of owe for. You see, it's one thing to work hard, but it's another thing to work hard at the right things. What am I talking about? I discussed this over a conversation with my good friend, Lanal Harris, host of the show Inspirational Perspective on Chicago Talk of the Town, WVON AM Radio 1690. So in this video, I'm going to unpack the three most critical components of that conversation about the fundamentals of work. If you want to have a financial breakthrough in the year coming ahead in 2021, as you kick this pandemic's tail, here we go. Starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Garage. And uh, this is another episode of Vlogmas 2020, as we've dedicated ourselves to upload an episode every day from the 1st of December to the 24th of December, based on what we're doing to help people understand and wrap their mind and expose themselves to financial literacy and financial education, to have some income thought strategies for 2021, so therefore you can kick this pandemic's tail, and also have some personal and leadership development to help you discover the next best version of you. All right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, in this first segment, I discuss the fundamentals of being busy versus being productive. It may not be what you think. What am I talking about? Let's check this out. How, how do you think about how do you think about busy versus productive? Yeah. So one of the things that because uh, I, I, obviously I run a sales organization, we have 17,000 mm -hmm. licensed agents across the country and we happen to have a large office here in, in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois area. But. I train a bunch of sales guys. I try, I, we have internal operations staff. We have, uh, we have our social media staff, content creation. And one of the things I'm always asking them, always asking myself is, is this allowing us to advance forward? Is this getting us to move forward? Is this allowing us to push the needle? Or if you're on the sales side of things, you're on the, more on the entrepreneurial side of things, is this making us money? Sometimes people get too caught up doing the preparation, the preparation, the preparation. I'm getting ready to get uh. ready. I'm getting ready to get ready. Right, but yep. you, the day goes by so fast, and they say, "You know, what did I get done?" Oh, you just got, you were just were busy today. You yeah, know, you didn't push the needle, or you didn't make any money today. You just got caught up and just getting caught up. So let me ask you, like in, in your own life and in your own work, like give us an example of what you noticed was busy work versus productive work to really bring this yeah. to life. So, for example, you know, obviously you want to market yourself on social media. Right, you want to get your word out there, whatever it is, whether it's your ministry, whether it's your your career, whether it's your business, you want to market yourself somehow, some way on social media. Mm -hmm. But we all get caught up in the social media trap. Mm. We get yeah. Okay, I'm researching yeah, yeah, one yeah. topic. Next, yeah. you know, I'm in a completely different topic. Damn, I just watched this fight video. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this, you know, this uh, uh, wild animal coming out of nowhere, you know, and shock. Next, you know, I was completely caught up in something else that caught me being busy instead of actually researching and finding the data or the information I needed to complete my task. I got, I just got caught up. So that that's busy. Work. That's number one. Number two, getting caught up in getting caught up in unnecessary conversations that caught you know around the office that doesn't progress your day forward. You just got caught up in talking about issues, other, other folks, other situations that weren't really relevant to moving your business forward that day or taking care of your project that day. That, got you. That, that'd got be, you. That'd be a couple of things after, you know, straight off the top of my so, head. So let me ask you this. How do you, how do you organize your day when you start, right? Yeah. I mean, because I'm guessing that you have to be clear yeah. on what productivity looks like. Here are my top mm -hmm. priorities. So how do, how do you go into your days and how do you organize your days yeah. to make sure you're getting the work mm -hmm. that you intend to get done done? So, for example, I don't wait till that morning to get my to-do list done. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I'm not thinking about what I need to get done today, today. I'm getting ah. right. I'm I'm thinking about it the night before. I'm thinking about what I need to get done the night before. So, for example, I clear my mind in terms of what happened that day, and get my mind prepared for the day to come. And so that day, I prepare myself. Okay, who, who are the uh, who are the people I need to contact to follow up on certain things? Who are what are the major projects I need to stay on top? What's up? Deadlines from a weeks that we discussed a week ago, a month ago, that we need to stop, stay on top of. What initiatives do we need to make sure we get ready for the next month? And so th these are some of the things I'm getting. By the way, those three items right there, they're all, all of those are three money-making activities. Got you. I'm either in an appointment. Oh, oh, so, ho, 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 ho. Say, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> so, cause, cause, I mean, I think that's important. So you measure yours by money-making activities. activities. Yep. 
Okay, yeah. so that's your productive work. That's my productive work. If it's a money-making activity, then it's productive. For sure. Got Absolutely. you. Yeah, got because you. as an entrepreneur, everything falls on your shoulders. you got the resistance. you got the pressure. No doubt, no right? doubt. Yeah. You're, you're feeding families with your business. If you're not responsible with your time, you, you know, worse is that you don't eat. Even worse is you're, you're, the people that you hired and the people that you recruited and decided to say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you with a financial future, with this job or this opportunity – they're not getting paid because you got out of focus. Mm. You got distracted. Right, you were not right, making right, money. Right. And you're not leading by example. Okay, so in this next segment, I discuss the awareness I had once I started realizing the value of my time and realizing that if I'm going to be growing a business, I need to stay focused on specific skill sets and things that I need to be aware of from once I understood the value of my time. Again, what am I talking about? Let's dive right into it. Here we go. Let's check this out. So you have this this breakdown in the busy versus productive mm-hmm. set that you yeah. call, um, like you, you distinguish different skill sets. Right. And I, I want you to share a little bit about that with me because what you what, what you share with me in terms of skill sets, you know, average skill, yeah. excellent skill, unique ability skill. Right. So what does that mean? And, and why is that important in the work that we do? So when I, when I started my insurance career, right, in the insurance business, I figured out really quickly I can, I can rock with the software, create illustrations, mm-hmm. right? And I said, wow, I didn't really realize this is how money works. This is how money grows. Comparison, analysis, all those type of things. But that didn't make me money because I got to sell it. I got to explain it. I got to find a client. Right? That's, right. that's, that's first right. and foremost. Right. So I got right. caught up being busy. I remember a good friend of mine, uh, he was also in the Marine Corps with me. He, he, uh, he, uh, he and I uh, separated from the military together. But he was good at finding the customers, finding the clients, finding, finding the, 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 the groups that would buy, finding the groups that he can get in front of. And then he'd come back to me. Hey, Matt, you, run, you know how to run these reports, right? Yeah, I do. Dude, show me how. And, and I think he was teach me a lesson. I don't think he was really doing this intentionally. <laughs> right, right, right. But he, he had 12 cases for me, 12 different case studies. I run a, uh, right, boom, this is a package you put together, but this is a company you use, da, 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 da. Dude, awesome. Dude. I'm thinking myself, I just gave him work to go make money, but I made no money. He's right. Like, he's like, thanks, Matt. <laughs> and he's off. And he's off. It's and like, so where would that fall in skill sets? Like, and in, in how, you, how, how you broke out these skill sets, like, yeah. what, where does that fall? Like, because what, what, what I'm seeing is he was in some ways focused on what you were talking yep. about earlier. Right. Which is like he was the, the money making work. He Correct. was he was focused on the money making work. Right. Right. You were good at the reports. Uh-huh. That doesn't necessarily Correct. make money, though. So so it really breaks down to three major categories. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number one is my average skill set. Number two, a B then would become your excellent skill set. And the third one, C, would be uh, your unique ability. Okay, so for example, I found that coming into the business, you, you, you let you come in something with usually an average type of skill set because you're just learning it for the very first time, and then after expressing a couple of times, doing it a couple of times, oh, I, I'm pretty good at this stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excellent at doing it. Okay, and if, if I'm excellent at doing it, I can take this, I can take the skill set and continue to progress it. But then you have to ask yourself, then you got to put it back to the filter. Does it make me money? Or does it just keep me busy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then when you find out, as you continue to drill down, and you find out, okay, wow, I'm really gifted at this. I'm, this is a unique thing for me. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody around me uh, can do this. So that's my unique ability. So long term, you want to find out what that unique ability is. So I found out. Let Love me, this. I found Love out. This. I was excellent at reports. Right? But right. it was making me money. But I had to find that unique skill set. That's the, that was the evolution. That was the progress. And, and then once I found out that I was a unique at it, I didn't want to do the reports anymore. I found someone else to do the reports, and I even split them in on the deals. So therefore, mm. I didn't have to do that busy work anymore. I created a job. Right. 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 <laughs> right? I created an assistant position. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the junior advisor, the junior uh, agent would come in and write do the reports. And they're happy because they're learning what they're average at. They're learning what they're excellent at because I want them to grow. I want them to be my assistant forever. If that, I mean, if they want to do that, that's what they want to do. No problem. Knock yourself out. But I also want them to find what their unique ability is. Man, I, I love that. I, I would say the thing, the skill set I had the hardest time giving up was my excellent skill set. Mm, yeah. Hey, no doubt. Because people say, uh, yeah. if you, you know yeah. that saying? Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. want it done right, do it yourself. 
eh, wrong. Mm, mm, because yeah. just I'm, I might know how to change a tire. <laughs> but I might be pretty but, good at it. But should you be changing tires? Should be changing tires. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Not, well, at least to me in my context, in what I want to do in my life, that's not money making activity. It might be a money making activity for somebody else who owns a tow trucking yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, service. Yeah. But to me, that's in the insurance industry or me that, that wants to, to, to build a company not in the automotive industry. That's not my, I might be excellent at it, but it's not my unique ability. I love that. All right. So far, so good. I sure hope you're considering taking some notes down and uh, jotting down some thoughts. But in this next segment, I discuss when I started realizing the value of my time, I realized that not only have to work on the business, in the business, through the business, I started realizing that not every entrepreneur, or at least in my situation, I couldn't work on a normal Monday through Friday type of mentality that so much had to get done. I didn't stay on top of things. So I have three different types of days that I was going through to make sure that I was on my game. And so let's unpack that here in this next segment coming up. Let's check this out. You talk about the three types of days every entrepreneur <laughs> should have. Right. And so break this down for me. Like, you know, why, if I'm an entrepreneur, I mean, why should I be thinking about my days differently yep. as I go into them? Isn't every day hump day? Every day work day? <laughs> like every day I should be going hard at Team what I sleep. do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, yeah. that's what you hear a lot of yeah. times, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. People get out there and say, yeah. hey, right. I mean, these guys with bulletproof coffee saying five hours of sleep, man, work, 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 yeah. work. Yeah. You're like, nah. well, yeah. you, you, it seems like you disagree. Yeah, I, I got this. I got this early on. My co- you know, again, as I was saying early on in my in my years of getting initially coached to coach me with the what the fundamentals were. So if you are going to do busy work, and you have nobody else to delegate it to because you're it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you got to get the busy work done, you, the preparation work done. I yeah. call that a buffer day. Uh, it's a buffer day. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. buff this. I, I, I'm gonna take a quick step back. I can work on the business, not in the business. I can work on my career, not necessarily in my career. For some people, that might be a retreat. For some people, that might be a business planning uh, day. Some For some people, that might be the time you do the reports and the prep, right, prep work. Right, right, right. So therefore, when you do put the PowerPoint together, you are ready for the money-making day, which which is which is uh, another day. But the first day is your buffer day. The next day you should have is a free day. Okay. Recreation. Whoa, wait. wait, wait. F- recreation. Re- and recreation comes from the root, root words recreate. Ah. You're recreating yourself. Uh-huh. You're recreating your vision. You're recreating your path. You're recreating, right? Because you're, you're, you're t- taking a step back. Recreation, free day. The phone shouldn't be going off. You shouldn't be on your phone. If you are t- you're on your phone, you're taking pictures of your loved ones and whatever you love to be mm-hmm. in because that's allowing you to sharpen the saw. Back from the old Stephen Covey book, Seven Habits. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so, so let me ask you this. Like, how does Matt Sapala spend his free day? Like, how do you recreate? I'm easy. Mm-hmm. Let me just wrestle around with the kids. I'm going to wrestle around with the kids. Um, uh, see my chiropractor, see a massage therapist, and I'm not talking about you know some some you know Swedish massage. I'm, I'm like, yo, get deep tissue, deep get tissue. up in it. Yeah, deep. Let's, let's make it. Let's make it happen. Let right. Me, let me. I would, I would, matter of fact, uh, I have a mouth guard. I have a mouthpiece <laughs> when I go get a massage because that's how intense he gets. Man. <laughs> I got you, got you, got you. It's a, right. Um, uh, I uh, I read a book. Okay. I get on, on, on my topic. I get involved in a, a, a subject matter. I get up to speed on things, so therefore I'm more informed. That's a free day for me. Got it. And, and like, where do these free days fall, like, in your week, in your month? Like, how do you distribute free days? Because, I mean, what I don't want is somebody yeah. saying, Matt Sapala said we can have free days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they're like, free days back to back. I mean, so I'm, I'm sure you break this down, right? Yeah. Like, so how do you distribute free days? I, by the way, I, I don't have very many of them. Okay, but because I'm always, you know, involved in something, but my my day is kind of broken down. It is broken into three different separate days. Mon- morning is one day to me. Okay, got you. Afternoon is another day to me, and the evening is another day to me. Mm. So my free days, for example, is Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, but I get back to work Sunday night. Remember gotcha. the night before? Yeah, I get yeah, yeah. I get my my week started not on Monday morning. I get my week mm-hmm. started on Sunday night. Okay, and, and why is that important to you? Like to get your week started on Sunday. Cause I, like this, yeah. one of the things I yeah. do Sunday mornings after the show, yeah. I go into the office mm-hmm. and I, ha- I do some of the buffer work mm-hmm. and the planning work. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I get where you're going. Sure. Why is Sunday night so important for you? Cause most people don't start to Monday morning. Sure. And yeah. so what, what makes, why is Sunday so special for you? I took this from the Marine Corps, man. Um, mm-hmm. Sunday night and Marines would come back from just getting, getting, you know, 
they're they're free day on Friday, Saturday, right? They're right. doing their thing, whatever they got done doing, partying, whatever the case would be, and traveling, whatever. But Sunday night is when we polished our boots. Sunday night was impressed out of uniform. Sunday night is when we mentally got prepared for what we got to accomplish on Monday morning because we know Monday morning, high impact, man. Whether we're you know we're running miles, whether we're, we're we're marching twenty twenty five miles, whether we're getting ready for an inspection. But Sunday night was always the me- mental preparation gotcha. for me to attack my week, mm. and I wanted momentum. I was like, I you know I, I I never wanted to feel like I'm always behind. You know, like sometimes we show up late for something. Yeah. You know, like hey, what yeah. time does this party start? What time does wedding start? What time does my appointment start? And 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 we were we were raised with being late. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In 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 a, in a world of business, that doesn't fly. Yeah, man. You you late to an appointment, you you, you, you lost opportunity. Big time. You know yeah, that's and, money. And you, people wonder why they don't get the opportunities because they show up late. Yeah. For me, I want to show up early, so therefore I'm mentally prepared. I'm ahead of the curve mentally, not just there physically, but mentally I'm ahead, and I'm anticipating what's about to happen versus reacting to what's going on. Got you. So there's one more day that you talk about. There you go. <laughs> And, now and, that's, and what day is this? That's the focus day. Okay. What, what, what's the focus day? Money-making activity. Ah, that is it. Okay. Done. Okay. So all money-making activities mm-hmm. on focus day. All money-making activities. So what does a focus day look like for you? Like, that's that's yeah. when I'm engaging with clients. That's when I'm engaging with uh, leadership development with inside our organization. That's when I'm helping our guys uh, get their businesses started on our platform. That's all revenue-generating money-making activities. If it doesn't make me money, if it doesn't make money, don't make sense. Don't make dollars, don't make sense. Got you. And so, so on the days like that, if, if, it, if it doesn't make money, how you think about it, if it doesn't make money, mm-hmm. I, I should not be doing it. Right. Because today is a money-making day. Like I know for my wife, she'll say, hey, today's a sales day. Right? So sure. for her, she's making all sales phone calls. Yep. She's speaking with clients, maybe someone who's closing out a contract. Correct. But, you know, how she kind of frames it to me is like everything I touch is money. Right. Or potential money. Exactly. It sounds like you're saying something very similar. Like for you, it's, it's hey, focus day is all my all money. Everything that's making money or has the potential to make money. You're in a money-making activity or you're setting up a money-making activity. That's all that is. All right. Well, there you have it. I hope you grabbed some gems, perhaps. Hopefully, you got some thoughts and ideas that you can implement right away. Make sure you continue to check out my buddy's show, Inspiration Perspective, hosted by Lanell Harris, every Sunday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And guys, he's been doing this for years. You talk about discipline. It's a big reason why he's so successful in his career, why he's becoming a first-generation cash flow millionaire too as well, why his last name of his generation is going to be changed forever because he decides to invoke discipline into his life because how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so I hope you got some thoughts here. Drop them in the comment section below. Your thoughts, questions, follows, feedback, drop them in the comments section below. And uh, here's another video for you guys to consider watching. Here's how to develop a millionaire mind. Because before you become a millionaire, you got to think like a millionaire. You got to strategize like a millionaire. So therefore, you can become a millionaire. And before it materializes, you got to fix what's going on in here. You got to fix the stinking thinking and got to get your mind right, get your thoughts right. So therefore, you can act right. So you can create the results that you want. If you haven't done so already, and if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So I appreciate you tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.